Two of the other types of reports that we can do within SUGAR are summation and summation with details reports. Hopefully the name kind of tells you a little bit about what these reports are going to do for you. First of all, they're going to help you summarize your data. And they're going to help you visualize that data with a chart of some sort. So a bar chart, a pie chart, a funnel chart, a line chart, to help you really be able to see what's going on with your data. The main difference between these is the level of detail that's visible in that report. So the summation report is more of a high-level analysis of your data. It's great for summarizing large groups of data or for generating a quick chart to put on a dashboard. While the summation with details report is going to give you access to more information, more data, so that you can better understand the details and kind of dig down deeper within what's happening with your data. The summation with details report does happen to be my favorite type of report, so one I use the most because it's generally kind of the best of both worlds. You have the visual capability of charting and seeing your data, but also being able to see some of the details about that information. Uh, the only you know, downside to the summation with details report is you can't export it into an Excel file, so that's the situation where I might pick a different report type. So I'm going to switch back to Sugar here, and I'm going to pull up a couple of different examples of reports. So I'm going to go ahead and open those all first. We're going to start with some of those summation reports, so more high level. I want to show off a couple of different capabilities here. Um, so first of all, you can see what's happening here is we are grouping our data into different categories. In this case, we're grouping by user. And so I can immediately visualize and compare the different users in whatever this category happens to be, um, average GL size as the case might be. Here's another example. And what's different in this report is I've chosen to group by two categories here. So I still have my user comparison happening with each bar representing a different user and their data. But you can see I have different color categories within each bar, within each user, where I can also drill down a little bit deeper and look at the different stages that their opportunities are in. So this report is letting me compare the sales funnels for each of my users and see how much money do they have at each different stage in the process. And here's another example with a different uh, bar chart on it, so going the other direction. Again, you can also do funnel charts and line charts and pie charts. Uh, I just personally like bar charts the most often. And so this one is a good example of when you might not care about the details of the data. This is a report on Sugar's tracker data, which if you don't know much about that, is um, something you can turn on from your admin settings to keep track of how your users are using the system. And so what this report is showing me is that the admin user is the most active user in my system, and they've principally been working on reports, it looks like, and that Chris is the next most active user in the system, and this is a demo system, so it makes sense that there's really only been two people who are active here. Um, in this case, I don't need to know the details of every single time Chris logged in and what account records he looked at and when he looked at them and what did he do with them. That data, that data is technically available to me in the tracker tables, but I wouldn't want to view all of that information in a report like this. And so this is a, a good scenario where that high-level analysis is more useful to me than all, all the details. If we were to take a look at let's do this one, one of these in the report wizard, we're going to see the steps look a little bit different than the rows and columns report that Justin was just showing you a few minutes ago. So we're still going to be able to do filters in our report, and we'll have the same capabilities there in terms of doing some of the more complex logic like Justin had in his report. Mine's a little bit simpler. But we're going to have a couple of steps we didn't see before with the rows and columns report, which is how we generate the chart. So one of those steps is going to be defining our groups for our report. How do we want to group that data into categories? In this case, I'm grouping first by username and then by sales stage, and that matches the chart we were looking at where we had a bar for each user, and then that bar was broken down by sales stage. So the order here actually does matter. If I were to drag these to the opposite order, 
that would change my report where I would have a bar for each sales stage, and then that would be broken down within each sales stage by user. And I guess we can go ahead and do that, and we can look at that result. We also need to choose a display summary for our report. What that means is how should Sugar summarize each of these categories into a number to represent on a chart. So a lot of times this is going to be doing some sort of math with your data. Very popular to use with an opportunity report to do a summary of the dollar figure field, whatever you've named that within your Sugar. By default it's called likely, so that's what I have it named here. But you can also do an average value, a maximum value, or a minimum value. So some average, maximum, or minimum are the op mathematical operations you can do on any numeric field. And then you also always have the option to just do a count. If I was doing a report on leads, for example, I might count how many leads that I get from different lead sources or how many leads does each person have that they're working on right now or something like that. And then, of course, I have to pick which type of chart I want. So again, you can see the list of different options here. And if we go ahead and save and run this, we'll see how this report has changed with switching the order of those group buys. I now have each sales stage as a column and then broken down by user within that. Now if we compare that to a summation with details report, the top of the report is going to look the same. Where things start to look different is when I scroll down. So I didn't actually necessarily show you this in the other reports, but if I scroll down here, the only other information I have is a table showing me the counts or the values that are shown in the chart, so not really very useful to me. Versus in my summation with details report, when I scroll down, I have a view that's much more like the rows and columns report that Justin showed you first. And in this case, I was able to select in my report wizard which columns to include, so what data do I care about. Again, that could come from multiple modules. I could pull in account fields into my opportunities report, for example. And this lets me really dig down deeper and understand what's happening with my data. It also gives me the ability, if I've used the name field in my report, to be able to just click and open any of these records. So I can go update something if I need to, or you know, even get more information besides what I've selected to show as my columns. And just one more example, just to show you, again, some flexibility. Here's a ch uh, funnel chart. And again, if I scroll down, I'm going to see additional details here. Uh, this is a report that you might use as well for a sales meeting like the one Justin had earlier, where you're looking at a list of all of your opportunities. This just gives you the ability to have that visualization as well.